Hello everyone, how are you doing today? You are all welcome to my channel, Apostle Paul Taiwo YouTube channel. To my recent subscribers I want to say a very big thank you, and to those that have been here all along, God bless you. And if this is your first time on this channel, I want to say a very big welcome and thank you for tuning into my video today. Kindly endeavor to click the subscription button and also the notification icon so that you can be notified whenever I dropped a new video or come up for prayers. Have you heard of our church building project? We will like to use this opportunity to ask for your financial support for the ministry. We are raising a building for the church ministry and this involve lots of fund. In case God has put it in your heart to support the ministry church building project, kindly reach out to us on our contact details which is on the video description, and you can also send directly to the account details on the screen. We will be glad and grateful to receive your financial support for the work of God. For God loves a cheerful giver, thank you. This video you are about to listen to I believe will bless your heart, and help you to come into repentance, and also strengthen your bond with God and with His Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Endeavor to like this video, share it to all your friends, contacts and loved ones, God bless you. I flew over earth and hell with the Lord. After this, the Lord took me by the hand that we began to fly. I could feel the air in my face as we flew. In reality, what I felt is something inexplicable because I realized that I did not have wings to fly. It was the power of God that enabled me to fly next to Him. The Lord told me, You are going to see those who make an effort to do my will and it will come to light that those who call me Lord, Lord, but do not do my will but adore me only with their lips. The Lord stopped at a very large church where there was a multitude of people. I felt that my feet were already standing on the ground and on the altar of that church we observed how they worshipped God. I could see two lights like lighted lamps and one on the right side of the church and the other on the left side. I asked the Lord, Lord, why are there only two lamps for there is a multitude of people here? The Lord answered me sadly. In the midst of that multitude there are only two who seek me and adore me from the heart and all the others are those who call me, Lord, Lord but only with their lips and do not do my will. He continued saying with great sadness, how few are the chosen ones who do my will. Then we flew back to another church. The church was also large full of people and we were watching. I looked at a soloist sister and she sang. She led the choir. The brothers who sang cried. It felt a lot of revival and it felt like an outpouring from God and the Lord told me, look. He pointed to the sister. She gives herself with all her heart. She makes an effort so that the people receive of me and like her there are many who also worshipped me like her, Jesus said and observed as they worshipped God. Then I could see another sister but when she sang the presence of God did not move. Immediately I saw another man who was also singing but which there was no presence of God. The Lord told me, look and listen to them. They are the ones who sing, they pray, they preach for the love of fame, for the love of money because they have taken my gospel as a business. I say they already have their reward. Later I saw a small and humble church but when the brothers sang and worshipped the presence of God flowed in them. I could see how they shed tears. The revival was extraordinary in that church. I could feel the well of living waters that they felt. The Lord told me again with his audible voice and with great joy, they are the ones who will be with me in heaven. I am content with them because they fight and surrender. They strive and everything they do is out of love for me. Then the Lord told me, go, you need to know more things. And we started to fly. I could look at houses, people, large churches and small churches full of people. Again the Lord told me, look and pointed to a group of young people who were in a street playing. They kept getting drunk and I asked the Lord, Lord, teach me why all this is happening. He answered me, because it is necessary for you to see it. Then he pointed to a young woman and told me, she is the daughter of a shepherd. I asked the Lord, does her father know it? He answered me, no, no. You know why? The enemy is deceiving many young people, many young ladies and children, but he has persecuted and deceived more the children of evangelical pastors and singers and the children of those who seek me continuously. He offers them vices, prostitution, drugs, and they deceive them with games in the internet. 
We kept flying with the Lord and I saw a group of children stealing. I could also see on earth there is a lot of doom and the Lord told me, the enemy is deceiving many people. No matter what, all he wants is to take many to hell. That's why you need to see all this. Then we continued flying over the mountains and over the land and I saw a man preaching in the market and in the streets. I also saw women preaching but people did not listen to them nor gave importance or paid attention to the word. They did not pay attention to the message they were transmitting. However, they continued to preach the word. The Lord told me, they are the ones who are busy with material things but one day they will not have an excuse. They will not be able to say that they did not hear my word because in different ways it is being made known and it is being preached that soon it will be the end of this land and there will be no stone on stone. We continued flying and the Lord told me, look what is going to happen in this land. Now I am giving them time. I have put my sons and daughters to preach and speak my word and they do not understand nor do they obey. They do not want to listen but look at this. We were in the air. I saw how a part of the earth was filled with water. The water of the rivers and the sea came out like raging. They flooded everything and I could see how people ran to save themselves and others worried about saving their family so as not to drown and others concerned about their business. I saw how they ran to the mountains and looked for the highest mountains to save themselves but the water grew greatly at the same time. I saw that in another part of the earth fire came out of the mountains. It burned everything that there was in its way. I saw that it came out like lava and covered the whole earth. People and whole families ran. They shouted wanting to be saved. Then rain began to fall but the rain was not water but its drops were fire. When those drops of fire fell on people they burned their bodies and people screamed and shouted. People ran wanting to hide but there was nowhere because everything was burning in fire. The Lord told me, this is when they were preached that persecution was coming but they did not listen and did not want to accept my word. Also this is because there are male and female pastors who preach to their own liking, only of the love of peace and blessing and do not preach that there is a torment for those who do not obey my word because on earth there will be no stone on stone. Once again the Lord Jesus Christ told me in an audible voice, I have offered them the best and they do not want. Later brothers I realized that we were standing in front of a beautiful sea, a sea of glass that shone gloriously. I said to the Lord, please Lord, please immerse me in this sea of glass. He answered me, immerse yourself for this is why I have brought you here. And when submerging I experienced great joy and could see how my clothes were changing into white so that I submerged myself even more. But then I saw a woman who had a part of her clothes stained. The Lord told me, this woman has looked for me and has given herself to me but there are times that she did not do my will. When she sees that others prosper she is envious. She likes to talk about others and it is true that she gives herself and is happy but gives her mouth freedom. For this reason her clothing is stained. The Lord told me, however, if she submerges completely she will have part with me because her clothing will be white. When I heard what the Lord told me, I told the woman, immerse yourself and crucify your dresses and wash your stains. But she did not want to submerge. I also saw a man who was in that place, but his clothing was stained anyway. The Lord told me, this man I have put him in front of a church but before preaching my word he commits sin. He commits adultery and after preaching my word, he commits fornication. Also he preaches my word at his convenience. The Lord continued saying, he is a fornicator, a liar. No one who has defiled his clothes has entrance here in heaven. I have reserved the greatest condemnation, the greater punishment for them and I have told them to repent. I have stayed in my long suffering as it is written in my word but he does not want to repent. As a result of this many souls are without the knowledge of the new heaven and eternal life and are awaiting their punishment in hell. The Lord continued saying, I approached him and those whom he leads, telling them to immerse themselves, crucify their clothes but they didn't want to either. I continued. My brothers, I saw a young lady who also stained her clothes and I told her, sister, nail your sins, remove those stains from your clothes, but she did not pay attention to me. The Lord told me with sadness, how much I have offered to my people but they do not want to receive me. As described in my word, many call me, Lord, Lord but there are few who do my will and few are those who are going to be with me. Then we were advancing in a place that got darker and darker. 
I felt a chill and was very afraid but the Lord told me, do not be afraid. He lit that place with his presence to continue our way. I heard many screams and when arriving in that place, I looked at flames of fire, and from this fire wails and screams were coming out. When I saw everything I was more afraid. God told me, do not fear. Do not be afraid. It is necessary that you see all this. However I felt a great sadness in my heart and suddenly I saw here a pastor, a woman and a young lady in that place of fire and of torment. I also saw many strange animals in that place that caused so much fear in me. The animals had their beaks and when they bite the body of the people they removed pieces of flesh. They left large wounds. They tore them apart. I could see animals similar to very large and black spiders with two heads and their legs sharp like the edge of a scissors with tips and they put them in the bodies of the people. I could hear the lamenting and crying with great sadness and suffering. Later I saw a young man who fell in that place and on top of him two demons began to torture him in a very painful way. I could see that they had two daggers. I looked at the animals getting on their bodies that they cleared off and took off their bodies. I looked at the small pieces falling and I started crying and told the Lord, Lord, I can't bear to see all this. I can't bear to see so much suffering. But the Lord said, it is necessary that you see the souls of those men and women to whom I have given ministry. I have given them power and authority and I have placed them in high places. However they gave place to pride and vainglory and preach my word according to what suits them. They preach only of healing, love and blessing but they never preach that the final judgment is coming, that there is a hell and there will be punishment for those who do not repent. As a result of all this, many souls fall to hell constantly. The punishment will be greater for those who do not preach my word as it should be. Dear listeners, I could look at that place of fire. It is a very large place that burns and there were many people there and some wanted to go out but when they tried others did not allow it. Their attempts were intense but unfortunately, they could not get out. It is desperate and sad to see so much suffering in that place. I watched how people burned and when they wanted to leave that place, demons that were big with black hands had big spears and hit them with that spear. Screams and howls of pain erupted there. There were also some big worms that entered the eyes and they came out in the mouth of the people that went back into the mouth and came out through the belly. They entered in and came out in different parts of the body of the people. These worms left large wounds because they were very sharp similar to a knife. There were young children of 8 to 10 years old. They screamed in a great way without resting and that touched my heart so much and I began to cry. I asked the Lord, why are children and young people in this place of torment? And he answered me, the enemy is deceiving many in different ways by putting pornography games and prostitution on the internet which caused many to sin. The enemy is deceiving them. I was seeing again how many people would be burning at all times. I could see a woman who was burning on fire and the Lord told me, do you know this woman? I answered, yes Lord, I know her. She is the daughter of a pastor. She was ill for a long time. Many prayed for her but one day I heard that she had died. I heard that her parents said the Lord showed them in dreams that she was in paradise with a white garment. Then God answered me, look she is here because in the midst of the suffering, she told me that she would reap in of everything. Even so she did not forgive and what they say that she is with me is a lie because they are the ones who lie. They are false and deceiving. But then I saw that we were in a place where there were some rooms to the bottom and they were separated in the place. It was very cold. It caused me a lot of fear and there were some men who were torturing them and there were some demons cutting off the fingers and hands of those men and they were tied with chains and I watched them put a spear that pierced their bodies and saw a man whose tongue was cut out. He shouted and said, have mercy on me, O oh God. I told the Lord, why is this man here and why do they torment him that way? And the Lord told me, this man on earth was a preacher of my word but he did not do my will. He preached and charged per message. He charged for prayer and accepted all kinds of sin in his church. He accepted the sin of others in exchange for tithes, in exchange for an offering and everything he did is for money. This is the punishment for evangelical pastors to whom I have given the power and authority of the ministry. I put a word on their lips to make souls fall in love for me more but they did not do my will. They also preached but they had two women. They like to dance and cohabit in the world. That is why this is eternal punishment for them. 
I watched as they took out their eyes, as they forced them to walk on points of fire that broke their skin. They forced them to walk on top of worms that had needles in them. They screamed and lamented and said, Have pity on my soul. The Lord answered, On the land they had many opportunities and did not take advantage of it. Later I looked at a table that contained many photographs and that some photos were already selected. I also saw the photograph of a sister that I know who has a great ministry. Her photo was like a sign and I told the Lord, Why are those photos already singled out from the others and they have a sign? The Lord answered me, They are the shepherds, servants, and ministers, children to whom I have given a ministry and they are working with all their hearts. I immediately asked the Lord, If they are your servants, why are there photographs here then? The Lord told me, The enemy does not like to see when they adore me. They seek me and win souls for me. They serve me and they do it from the heart. They serve me from the heart. That is why the enemy has his sights on them to destroy them and give them problems and put contempt and diseases on them, sadness, desires of the flesh and many more things to steal what I have given them so that they fall and forget about me. But only the one who asks for help and does not leave me and is recorded in fastings, prayers and vigils will be able to snatch my kingdom and they will be able to overcome that. Beloved Church after a few months in the church that sister who had her photograph there was implicated and her ministry was buried by other pastors and solo evangelists. Brother and sister, if you have a ministry, be strong and brave, try to be prepared to achieve eternal life. Beloved brothers, I could see in the midst of that fire there was a lot of pain, regrets, sadness, screams, suffering. At every moment the cries and more regrets were heard. I said to the Lord, 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 get me out of here. I can't stand to see all this. He said, Come, my daughter and do not fear because it is necessary that you see all this. We started walking and the further we advanced the further we got away from that place of screams and laments. We were again standing on the road where we began to walk and the Lord said to me, It is necessary, daughter, to testify to my people what I have shown you. Tell them that my coming is near. Immediately the Lord showed me an angel like the one who was in a high place and who had a trumpet in his hands and was ready to blow it. The Lord said to me, Look, look. He is only waiting for the signal and the trumpet will sound. When the Lord told me all that, I felt very sad and said, Lord, Lord I no longer want to return to earth because there is pain and affliction, there are scorn, struggles and trials and I want to stay here with you Lord because here there is peace. Here only praises are sung. But the Lord told me, it is necessary for you to return. It is necessary that you testify, testify it in your town everything that I have shown you. A lot of people will not believe you and many will make fun of you and many will rise up against you but do not worry I will help you and strengthen you and I will never leave you. I forgot that I had my children, my husband, my family and the only thing I wanted was to be there with my God. At the moment the Lord told me, I began to hear voices and I began to listen to the brothers and sisters who were in the temple that night. At that moment I began to feel that I was already in my body but I could not get up because my body was cold and that this flesh had no movement and when I could open my eyes, I only cried and cried and cried passing a good time. When God gave strength to this body I did not know how to pray at that moment of gratitude to God and this testimony is for the glory and honor of the Lord. This is what happened on that night. Glory to God. Hallelujah! Glory! A Nigerian soldier was shot dead in a battle some years ago. But as he was about to be buried, he came back to life. Published below is the story of his experience in the land of the dead. The story was narrated during a deeper Christian life ministry church revival program many years ago. This true life story will warns you of the reality of hell and of the needs to repent, confession of sins, and believing the gospel so as to escape punishment in hell. The follow account of divine revelation of dead experience of this Nigeria soldier was later published by the Deeper Christian Life Ministry Church magazine in September 2002, which portrayed the aftermath of a dead Nigeria soldier and his experience in the land of the dead. In this account of divine revelation of hell by this Nigeria soldier, you will understand that life is empty after death and nothing in life is worth fighting for. Eternity is not holiday is not a long journey or vacation, after millions years it has just began. Eternity is life without end. 
It's appointed unto a man once to die, after then comes the judgment of God. Everything done in the secret shall be open on that day, followed by eternity in heaven or hell. Do you know that you will outlive the sun? Do you know that when the earth and stars have all passed away, you will just begin your endless day a time without end? Once you are born you will never cease to live. It happened during the Nigerian Civil War, 1967 to 1970. I had enlisted in the Nigerian army, determined to fight on the battlefield. At the end of our training, I was made a quartermaster. I was to be in charge of issuance of uniforms and ammunition to soldiers. In my heart, I loathed the quartermaster work. I was itching to be a combatant soldier. To cut a long story short, I was finally allowed to fight on the battlefield. I wasn't quite three months at the battlefront when I was shot. When the bullet hit me, I did not know that anything had happened. All that I observed was that my surroundings became enveloped in a thick darkness that cannot be described. Then I began to run in the thick darkness. I did not know that I had died. While I was running in the darkness, I saw a spotlight ahead. I was happy. If I could pass through the darkness, I would enter into the light, I had reasoned. I pressed on. When I reached to just a short distance from the light, I saw two paths in front of me. As I stood wondering which way to go, I heard a voice ask where are you coming from? I answered that I was coming from the world. From the world? The voice asked. I said yes. The voice asked how long I lived in the world and what I did while in the world. Then I began to confess. I did not even know that anything had happened. I did not know that I was dead. It was just like a normal conversation. I recounted everything I had done from the age of seven. I wanted to tell lies but it was impossible. My mouth spoke as if a tape recorder was playing. When I had talked and talked, recounting all my evil deeds, I burst into tears. Yet as I was weeping, I kept on confessing all the evil I did. When I finished talking, a book appeared before me in which was written all the sins I had committed since the age of seven. I realized then that in death, there is no question of illiteracy. Even if you were illiterate in life, you will be able to read in death. That day, when you finish confessing, you will read again all the sins you committed, for there is no partiality there. The book was in front of me and I continued to read from it. When I finished reading, judgment came. I heard, look to your left and go in there before the voice that spoke to me could finish talking, I found myself on the pathway on the left. The moment I took to it, I began to hear ahead of me terrifying voices crying, shouting, whoa, fire, and many other things I cannot describe here. I had not reached the place, but the noise and the heat were terrible. The whole area was unbearably hot because of the permeating heat coming from the inferno of hell. The fire cannot be described with words. It was like a great bush fire rising and rolling up into folds. But as I was about to go into the fire, I heard a voice say, Son, your sins are forgiven. I was then told to go back into the world and make right my ways. I suddenly turned around and sped back the way I came. By then in the world, mourners had already removed my body from the place where I was shot, in preparation for my burial. The military doctors having confirmed me dead, the army authorities had no choice but to bury me. Orders were given to that effect. They were now performing the silent drill for me. This is the last ceremony performed for a soldier before his burial. It was while the silent drill was on that I felt my spirit enter into my body. But strangely, I was ashamed and did not want to open my eyes. I did not quite know where I was. I had not wanted to leave the place I had just come from, yet I dreaded entering into that fire. A major that was in charge of the funeral ceremony, noticed some movement within the coffin and ordered the carriers to wait. Then they opened it to examine me. I opened my eyes and immediately began to tell the major the things I had seen. I told him there is God and that there is hell as well. I was not able to control myself, but went on talking. I had not talked for more than three minutes when great pain came all over me. It was then I realized that I had been wounded. I was taken to hospital for treatment. Understanding the meaning of eternity. Do you know you will live forever? you will be alive eternally. Eternity has no end. This is a solemn and fearful truth. 
Suppose it were possible to tie a rope from the earth to the heaven and an ant were to go to the sun and return on this rope, when the ant has done that a hundred times, then a small fracture of eternity has just passed. Suppose a small boy were to empty an ocean with a cup, the time it will take the boy to do so at a very tiny part of eternity. If it were possible to gather the entire book that had ever been written in all fields of human endeavor and in all languages, and a student were to read them one by one, the time he will spend reading all the books will only amount to a minute fracture of eternity. If a grain of sand represents one day, all the sand at the seashore will represent only a small, negligible part of eternity. If a bird went to sharpen its beak once a year at a mountain, when the bird went to the mountain this way, only an insignificant part of eternity wound had passed. Eternity is the lifetime of the never-dying God. You will live for eternity just as God is alive eternally. Once born, a person remains consciously alive forever. Eternity does not terminate at the time of death. Death is just another rung on the ladder of eternity. It is only gateway to eternity either in heaven or in hell. There is the resurrection of life and there is the resurrection of damnation, this may shock you. I pray it does. Every sinner will end up in eternal hell and every saint will go into eternal heaven. You will live forever in heaven or hell. There is no neutral place, noting likes purgatory. Jesus Christ never talked of anything or anywhere like that. Someone said I am on the fence, no. There is no fence. You are either a Christian or a sinner. Mark 8 36 inches for what shall it profit a man, if he shall gain the whole world, and lose his own soul? You are either on the narrow ways to heaven or on the broad way that leads straight to hell. You will either live with God forever in heaven or live forever in hell with Satan. These are stark realities you must face. Isaiah 55 6-8 Seek ye the Lord, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. He will abundantly pardon, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. Choose you this day, where do you want to spend eternity? You can only answer with an action. Neglect this message and warning. Postpone your day of repentance and continue in sin. Then you have answered the question. Eternity in hell is sure for every sinner who refuses or neglects to repent. Choose you this day, where will you spend eternity? in heaven with God? Then you must repent now. Therefore seek ye the mercy of the Lord, while it's still available. After death no more mercy and eternity follows. Proverb 28 13 inches he that cover his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confess and forsake them shall have mercy. Grace be with you all that have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Amen. Bye for now. Hello everyone. Thank you for watching our video for today, I trust it blesses your heart, endeavor to give a like to this video and share it to all your contact and loved ones. I pray the grace of the living God will continue to rest upon you and upon everything that pertains to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. If you have any question or comments kindly drop them in the comments section, God bless you. See you in our next video and have a lovely day, bye for now.